In the late 1800s, as the working class came more into their own and had a little bit of discretionary funds, they wanted to be entertained. So it became an emerging thing to seek amusements. Movies, a dance hall, the circus, vaudeville, they all became very popular attractions. However, one of the most popular sources of entertainment were the Wild West shows. The original Wild West show was started by Doc Carver and Buffalo Bill as a way to empower the Old West and also celebrate women such as Annie Oakley and Calamity Jane to show their prowess and sharpshooting abilities. Following the duo's split, Buffalo Bill took over the Wild West show, while Doc Carver got into a much different act. Do you have anything to do on horseback? Do you dive with any... You do dive with any... <laughs> 15 dives 40 feet. What was that again? Dives 40 feet on horseback into 12 feet of water, I believe. The horse as well. The, ho the whole business, Martin. This week on Wheel of Attractions, we're taking a look at the bizarre history of horse diving. A diving horse was an attraction that was popular in the mid-1880s, in which a horse would dive into a pool of water, sometimes from as high as 60 feet. As the origin story goes, in 1881, William Doc Carver was crossing a bridge over the Platte River in Nebraska on horseback. As he was midway over the bridge, it started to collapse. This startled the horse and they both fell, or dived, into the waters below. And it was then that Doc Carver said to himself, wow, it sure would be great if people were around to watch that happen again, and even better, if they paid to watch it. Carver trained various animals and decided to take his act on tour. His son, Al Floyd Carver, constructed the first ramp and tower, and his daughter, Lorena Carver, was the first rider. His show was an immediate success. Over the years, Doc Carver added more riders and more horses to his traveling show. But in 1907, tragedy would strike when the show came to Electric Park in San Antonio, Texas. People arrived from all over, more than eager to pay 50 cents a head to see a member of Carver's troupe ride a horse off a four-story platform that the show's stagehands had erected. But on Sunday, February 17th, the crowd witnessed much more than they had bargained for. Something went terribly wrong when 18-year-old rider Oscar Smith made his leap from the ramp. Smith slipped during the dive and the fall killed him, though the horse survived. The city's four scrappy daily newspapers, The Express, The News, The Gazette and The Light all went crazy with the story. The Light scored a major scoop, a stop-action photo of the unfortunate rider on his way down. It's not often that a newspaper is enabled to print an actual photograph of a man within three seconds of accidental death, and while in the act leading to it, the newspaper bragged tastelessly in a one-page story. To add insult to injury, just two days after the accident, The Light published a large display ad placed by Carver's publicity man. The ad made no mention of Oscar Smith's tragic demise, instead promising the five high diving horses will all dive. The ad also touted the girl in red, the bravest girl in the world, and not to be missed of course, was Dr. Carver, the champion shot of the world, in his wonderful exhibition of rifle shooting using solid, real, bullets. The horse jumping rider was soon forgotten by all but his friends and family, but Carver kept the horse act and the show went on. In 1923, a 19-year-old girl read an ad in the local newspaper in Savannah, Georgia. It read, Wanted, attractive young woman who can swim and dive, likes horses, desires to travel, see Doc Carver. This young girl was perhaps one of the most famous horse divers of all, Sonora Webster. She was born in 1904 to a working class family in Waycross, Georgia. Growing up, she would skip school to ride horses, and she once said, To understand how I felt about riding horses, one should know that when I was only five years old, I tried to trade my brother for a horse. After reading the ad, her mother suggested that she go and meet Doc Carver, but Sonora didn't want any part of it. Even still, she went to a state fair 
and she saw the diving horses act and became enamoured with it. She later described her feelings while watching the spectacle. As the horse galloped past, the girl jumped on. For a split second, her form was imprinted on the sky like a silhouette. Then her body arched gracefully over and plunged into the tank. I was completely spellbound. Within months of witnessing the diving horse act for the first time, she joined Doc Carver's troupe, who were performing in fairs all over the country. Sonora began her training for the horse diving act, progressing from 12 feet to 20 feet, and finally to 40 foot dives, often getting bruised all over her body and becoming so sore that she could hardly move. On May 20th, 1924, Webster made her first public dive off a 40 foot tower at an amusement park in North Carolina. She eventually married Carver's son, Al, and continued her life on the road. In 1927, tragedy struck the shore once again. Carver was attending an old timers convention in Norfolk, Nebraska, where he enjoyed reuniting with other frontiersmen. Following the convention, he travelled to Omaha, Nebraska, and while there, he received word that his favourite horse had drowned following a dive into the Pacific Ocean. Sonora Webster later wrote about how the loss of the horse, coupled with failing health, seemed to diminish Carver's desire to live. On August 31st, 1927, the famous frontiersman, Dr. Carver died in Sacramento, California. Sonora remembered that Carver was a stern man, but loved his horses and insisted that they be given the best of care. Over the next couple of years, the show settled down as a permanent fixture at Atlantic City's Steel Pier in New Jersey. The Diving Horse Act continued in popularity, especially when Sonora made the leap on her horse, Red Lips. But yet another tragic event, and perhaps the most famous one, would occur in 1931. During a dive, Red Lips lost its balance on the platform, and as Sonora became concerned about the horse during the dive, she leaned back on the horse, but didn't close her eyes. She plunged into the pool, with the water pressure hitting her directly in the face. Sonora survived the fall, but the impact blinded her. But as soon as she recovered, she continued the act. Her being sightless added another layer of thrill to the show. She didn't want someone guiding her out of a dressing room and onto the platform, so she developed a strategy to follow a rope to her position and she would wait for the horse to run up the ramp to her. Not every jump was perfect, sometimes she missed the horse entirely when trying to mount it, but she claimed to never have an injury other than a sprained ankle. Sonora's sister Arnett later joined the show. Arnett, who was 15 when she took her first horse dive, remarked in an interview that wherever we went the SPCA Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals was always snooping around trying to find if we were doing anything that was cruel to the animals they never found anything because those horses lived the life of Riley the troop kept jumping right up until World War II Al and Sonora Carver retired in 1942 the act finally closed as a result of pressure from animal rights groups in the 1970s Sonora Carver, however, always contended that the horses were never forced to dive and, in fact, enjoyed the act. Sonora Webster's autobiography, A Girl and Five Brave Horses, came out in 1961 and told her story of growing up, her love for horses, and her rise to fame as part of the Diving Horse Act. In the late 1970s, horse diving became briefly popular again, although this time, there was usually no one riding the horse during the dive. In Lake George, New York, the Magic Forest theme park hosted a diving horse feature beginning in 1977, originally featuring a horse named Rex, who was later replaced by one named Lightning. The manager stated, There is no rider, no prods, no electrical jolts, and no trapdoors. This new era of horse jumping act operated for a few years before pressure from animal rights groups once again shut it down. It was clear that times had changed. But a good story will always prevail. In 1991, Walt Disney Pictures made a movie called Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken, based very loosely on the life of Sonora Carver and her diving horse act in Atlantic City. In every girl's life, there are dreams of adventure, of romance, of greatness. But Sonora had a special dream. Who are you? Your new diving girl. No, you're not. 
Although she could not see the movie, for obvious reasons, she did go to it with her sister, Arnette. It was later revealed that Sonora was actually disappointed by the film and the way in which it depicted her life and career. She told her sister that, The only thing true in it was that I rode diving horses. I went blind and I continued to ride for another 11 years. Her sister Arnette added, the movie made a big deal about having the courage to go on riding after she lost her sight, but the truth was that riding horses was the most fun you could have and we just loved it. In 2012, Anthony Catanoso, owner of the Steel Pier amusement park where Doc Carver permanently moved his show before his death, decided to try and bring back the horse diving act one more time. This time it would involve a horse leaping from a 40 foot tall platform into a 12 foot deep pool. Atlantic City had fallen on hard times as its legendary casinos faced growing competition from others on the east coast and the city battled a rapidly growing crime rate. Nostalgia for Atlantic City's edgy past led to such television hits as HBO's Prohibition era Boardwalk Empire. But Cadenoso got a far different reaction to his plan to revive horse diving. More than 55,000 people signed an online petition on change.org denouncing the reintroduction of the act. Ultimately, the plans to revive the Steel Pier Centerpiece Diving Horse Act were scrapped, and instead the park announced a $100 million investment into new amusement rides and entertainment venues. And so the controversial Horse Diving Act was no more. Sonora Webster Carver died at the age of 99 years old, but her legacy, and the legacy of Doc Carver's diving horses, lives on in the memories of attractions history. Well, that wraps up yet another episode of We Love Attractions. Do you have memories of visiting Steel Pier in Atlantic City? Leave us a comment below with your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and hit that subscribe button to hear the history from other acts and theme parks in the attractions industry. And I'll see you next time on We Love Attractions.